out. How much did he pay you? He went into that town alone. Anyone care to ride into Virginia City with me? Boss. Not into Virginia City, not yet. It's exactly what they want. Just the four Cartwrights. Well, we'll ride in. But we'll have a hundred men riding in after us in the morning if we haven't returned. We'll let the men from the North Valley. Adam, you ride out to the settlers in the Tahoe Rim. I'll take care of the men at the sawmill. As soon as we're through, we'll ride into Virginia City. I'll be waiting for you in the Sazerac. See? We don't go back by morning. Kill him. We better let him rest, ma'am. We don't want to get him all tuckered out. I see. It's very considerate of you to drive me, Mr. Cartwright. Well, most people hereabouts just call me Little Joe. Little Joe? Well, you're not that small. I was not that, ma'am. It's my brother Horst is that big. <laughs> yes, he is. But what kind of a name is that for a man, Horse? Oh, he had some other name when he was born. But then when he weighed in at 50 pounds, when he was just a couple of months old, well, people just forgot the other name and started calling him Horse. 50 pounds at a couple of months. Now, that's impossible. Impossible, ma'am? I don't think you'd say that if you could have seen Horst's mother. Isn't she your mother, too? Who, that big gal? <laughs> oh, no. Her pa said she stood six feet tall in her stocking feet and could punch like a mule. <laughs> that's how Paul met her. She threw him two out of three times in a wrestling match. Oh, she didn't. No. Now, she's a real beautiful woman. Came from Sweden. Her pa said she was like a clean, fresh sunrise. I'm sure she was. Your father was married twice? No, more than that. More than that? Yeah, older brother Adam. He's from Pa's first wife. She was the daughter of a New England sea captain. Imagine my Pa being married to a Yankee. What's so wrong about a Yankee? Ma'am, if you don't already know, you say no use my telling. Mr. Cartwright, when will we ever get to Virginia City? Almost before you know it, ma'am. Ha! Ah, come on! Just snagged the fly. Troy, do you, uh, you think Miss Crabtree would appreciate being called a spider? As long as she collects her fee of $10,000 for this special performance, I don't think she cares what she's called. Boogie's yours, ma'am, for as long as you stay in Virginia City. Oh, that's most gallant of you, little Joe. Hope you didn't mind the ride too much, ma'am. I loved it. Fastest 20 miles I've ever experienced. You will stay for my performance, won't you? I don't know what could keep me away. Well, I'll look for you from the stage. After the show, we have dinner together? After the show, you ask me then. You know what you're going to do. Right. Oh, Miss Crabtree, this is indeed a pleasure. You sent for me, Mr. Troy? I'd have come to you, but I was afraid I couldn't crowd my colleagues in that cramped little dressing room. Uh, Miss Crabtree, I want you to meet uh, Aaron Cooper of the Yellow Jacket. How do you do? Mr. George Garvey of the Diablo. My pleasure, gentlemen. You're famous worldwide. Won't you sit down, please? Oh, well, thank you. Might I add, so is yours. Oh, by the way, uh, congratulations. Congratulations? For what? 
My performance isn't until later. <laughs> well, let's say for bringing that young man into Virginia City. Oh, is that so difficult? Did you have any doubts? It isn't easy to get a cut right to do anything. Didn't you think I was woman enough to persuade one young man to do my bidding? Oh, enough to do all that, I'm sure. And more. But you see, Miss Crabtree, our task isn't quite finished. What is there left to do, Mr. Troy? We want you to persuade that young man to accompany you to your hotel rooms. After this evening's performance, of course. Of course. Well, how interesting and how unusual. Uh, what do I do then? Make love to him? <laughs> no, uh, just keep him there. Talk to him. Do anything but keep him there. He's such a boy. What should we talk about? Talk about his blasted trees. They've got more than a million of them up there on the Ponderosa, and we want them. Trees? You want trees? I thought you were all silver kings. Trees spell timber. And we need timber, Miss Crabtree, desperately, to keep our minds going. You see, the deeper the veins go into the earth, the richer, the purer the silver. But without timber, millions of feet of it to support our tunnels and our shafts. There's a limit to how deep we can go. Then it appears I've earned my rather exorbitant fee. Get that boy up into your room tonight, and you've earned another 10,000. What do you intend to do with him? Hold him as a hostage until Ben Cartwright gives us the right to cut down his trees. And what if Ben Cartwright refuses? The way Ben loves those sons of his, I don't think he'll refuse. I'll expect another 10,000, Mr. Troy. If you promise not to harm that boy. It's a friend, huh, Blink? Put down the war club. Oh, so much happy to see friend. Always happy to see you too, huh, Blink? How is honorable son, Hop Singh? He cook very good? Oh, very good. Horse loves him like a brother. Ah, so very good son. You come from Virginia City all alone? You take terrible risk. Well, if Honorable Father just take my horse to the stable, I want to take care of a few little things uptown. You mind, Hop Lane? For a very beautiful lady. I have come for to court you Your affections for to gain And if you'll give me good attention Perhaps I'll come twice more 